Hello there. You know that kid's book that's like Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day? That's gonna be today, <laughs> except the title of this is gonna be Morgan and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad idea. Now, pumpkin spice season is well upon us and each year it feels like it's coming sooner and sooner because I don't know about the rest of you, but it is like, it is like a hundred outside. <laughs> so I don't know if you are all drinking your PSLs hot, but if you are, I am slightly concerned. Anyways, we have a running tradition of doing something strange with pumpkin spice every single year. We started off pretty easy. We just did our own pumpkin spice recipe. Uh, one year we actually reviewed someone else's pumpkin spice recipe. Last year we made a coffee spiced pumpkin pie. And this year, I think I have an even stranger idea. Now, usually I test all of these ideas behind the scenes, and then what gets presented to you in video form is the final idea. I have not tested this before, so you are just coming along on this concept <laughs> of a pumpkin spice latte that either will be very, very good or horrendous, and I don't think there is any in between here. Today, I want to essentially create the most complicated pumpkin spice latte I can, and by doing that, I'd like to create a clear slash transparent PSL. Spoiler alert, we will be trying to clarify some things, which I've done before with coffee drinks. It's turned out okay in the past. We'll just see how this goes. I'm looking at all my tools and I'm getting nervous already. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so essentially what I wanna do today is I wanna create a really potent and like strong pumpkin spice syrup that is gonna encompass all of the flavors we need to incorporate into this latte. Then we're gonna have our milk, we're gonna have espresso, we're gonna add all of those things together and then we're gonna clarify it into a liquid that is hopefully a really nice kind of pumpkin-y, orange transparent color. And then on top of that, I want to add some sort of like vanilla or like pumpkin spice whipped cream. This might sound simple. I think I have made it as complicated for myself as possible though. So first things first, we're gonna make our syrup. Now with pumpkin spice lattes, usually there is some level of pumpkin involved. However, due to it still being August, there are no pumpkins available. So we, uh, we have some puree here. And I'd like to incorporate this into our syrup, which means we need something a little bit more liquidy than puree. So. First things first, I thought we would put this through a cheesecloth and see what happens. Again, usually you all don't see this. <laughs> usually this is done in the privacy of my own home without cameras. So let's see what happens. I'm uh, having flashbacks here to when I reviewed James Hoffman's pumpkin spice latte recipe uh, and ended up like coring and then shredding and then juicing like an entire pumpkin <laughs> to do it. That is a little bit what this feels like. Juice of a pumpkin, please. I don't think I need very much. I just like to squeeze out as much liquid as possible. I'm gonna use it as like half of the liquid for a simple syrup is my plan. Then I'll just do the rest water like one usually would. This is a, a very fun tactile experience for anyone who likes to fidget or squeeze on things. This is a very enjoyable. Okay, that is a large majority of the, uh, the liquid coming out of our little pumpkin sack. So let's move on with this. I don't really know if there's any use washing my hands. I think today is gonna be very, very messy. We have some pumpkin liquid here. Let's uh, make up our spice blend. Now my plan today is to kind of make um, a little spice packet that we're then gonna place inside our simple syrup as it all melts and infuses down. That way we can very easily remove it afterwards rather than fishing out a ton of like whole spices. Also this entire process process is gonna go through so many levels of filtration. I'm not, I'm not super worried about any like kind of like whole spices or like particulate getting stuck in anything. Okay, the primary spices involved in pumpkin spice are usually cinnamon. Uh, you usually have some nutmeg and you usually have some cloves. Now, two that I like to add to this entire scenario are usually ginger. And I also like to add just a little bit of allspice. I think this complements it all very nicely. I'm describing this so seriously, <laughs> like this is in any way a serious drink. We're gonna measure with our hearts here. I'm gonna go mostly with the cinnamon. I think it's gonna be like two parts cinnamon to kind of everything else. Next, our nutmeg. It's about half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Very light on the ginger, just a dash there. Again, just kind of a, a dash of allspice. And then I happen to have whole rather than ground cloves right now. So we're just gonna go in with, don't need a ton of cloves. Cloves are pretty strong. Just a little, little sprinkle of whole cloves <laughs> just to go against the grain a bit. This right here is just a little tea sachet, usually for loose leaf tea. However, we're gonna use it as kind of our spice packet. So just kind of 
encourage everything in there and we'll give it a nice little shake. Okay, I think this should be a good base for a syrup. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of measure things out into my saucepan before we dump it on the heat. Talked about this before many times, I think, with my syrup videos, but since we're going for kind of a, a darker profile <laughs> with this syrup, we're gonna use a slightly uh, darker flavor of sugar. So I have a Demerara sugar right here. That is 250 grams of sugar. I think today to avoid like a lot of dilution in the drink with the syrup, I'm gonna be doing a two to one syrup. So two parts sugar to one part water, which means we're gonna add 125 grams of liquid in total. And as much of that liquid can be pumpkin juice as possible, I think we'll be good. Let's see. You know, I might be able to do this all the way with just pumpkin juice and sugar. I think we're gonna do that. I was not expecting to have enough uh, of our pumpkin juice, but we now have 125 pumpkin juice to uh, 250 sugar. Here's hoping this dissolves and works the way it should. So like we do with pretty much all syrups, my plan here is to bring this just under a boil on like a medium heat. And then once it reaches that point and all that sugar has dissolved, I'm gonna reduce it to like a simmer on low heat. Let it sit for about 10, ish minutes or so uh, to really infuse and become fully homogenized as a syrup. So just, just gentle stirs. We'll see what happens with the pumpkin juice. We may need to add a bit of water um, as well, but hopefully not. Okay, so this is kind of the long process. So I'm gonna just tie my little spice packet to the side here, let that infuse. I will see you back here, either when something disastrous happens or when my syrup is done. Welcome back. So all of our sugar is dissolved. This is kind of sitting on a simmer right now. Everything is infusing. So I think I'm gonna set this off to the side to do the rest of its work while we get our other ingredients ready. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is prep the stuff for our clarification. So if you haven't seen clarification before, this is a uh, technique very common in cocktails. Um, a lot of baristas use it in competition. I used it uh, last year uh, for simply one of my ingredients but it is essentially when you intentionally curdle milk uh, to separate out the curds from the whey. Now you will usually do this uh, with your other uh, drink ingredients included. That way when you strain it all out and you pull those curds out, you're left with uh, a drink that is very tasty but also has a very like thick and like heavy and velvety mouthfeel to it without just like adding dairy. So it feels like dairy, but it doesn't taste like dairy, if that makes sense. Anyways, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use whole milk today, and that's best for clarification. Uh, but then we need an acid of some type. And usually I'll just use like a citrus juice. Like if I want the flavor of lime in my drink, I'll just use lime for the clarification. You can use lemon, you can use most citruses. But you can also do this just by making like a citric acid solution. Since we're doing a pumpkin spice latte, I don't really want the flavor of limes or lemons to be included in this. So we're gonna go the citric acid solution route. Of course, to do that, I have some citric acid. You can really do this to like whatever ratio you want of like just citric acid to hot water to dilute it down. I'm gonna go pretty strong. I think I'm gonna go like, I, I usually do like a 10 to one, but I want this to curdle really quickly without adding a lot of liquid. So I think I'll go maybe two to one water to citric acid. That's a lot of citric acid, but we really won't need to use much of it in theory. Again, this is all theory. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, usually prefer the citrus juice route, but we're not doing that today, so trial and error. Okay, 20 grams of citric acid. Uh, I'm gonna go in with about 40, maybe closer to 50 grams of hot water. I can already feel everyone yelling at me um, about this, <laughs> but we're gonna see what happens. I've had success mildly in the past, and so we're just looking to replicate that. Okay, something else to note too, especially when using citric acid, um, is you will still be able to taste it in the final drink. And so we're gonna really have to counterbalance that um, with the addition of our syrup. So I don't want my coffee beverage <laughs> to be just like the tartest, most like mouth puckering thing in existence. So we will be adding more sugar than you are used to, but it's to kind of counteract the acidity we're adding. Okay, that's all melted. Our syrup is almost done. I already have my espresso pulled. So all that we have left is the milk. You can definitely clarify like room temperature and like cooler milks, but clarification in general is a lot easier when the milk is warm. So I'm gonna go stick this in the microwave for about a minute. I am planning on making like two servings of this beverage. I have a 
quad shot pulled on the side. So I'm gonna be using uh, about two cups or like 16 ounces of milk here. Again, in the microwave for about a minute just to get this heated up. We'll add all the rest of our ingredients and then we'll curdle it. While that's in there, we have some pumpkin spice syrup to taste. Very curious how this turned out. It, it all behaved normally, so here's hoping it tastes good. Tastes pretty good. Not that the syrup is gonna save this <laughs> at all, but we have one component that tastes pretty good. I'm just gonna dump it in here for easy pouring. It is very pumpkin-y, it is very sweet. We've got a good amount of spice in there. It's also very thick, so I think we have a good syrup. I think regardless of how the rest of this goes, this is a very tasty syrup. Okay, our milk is heated, scale. Now for two servings of this, I'm trying to think about my syrup proportion, because I'm gonna add this in now rather than later. I think I'm gonna go in with 50 grams of syrup, which again, feels like a lot. I'm not super worried about adding in syrup after we clarify, just with how kind of like light, and this is like a pretty clear syrup, it shouldn't change the color or the transparency too much. So let's go in with 50 grams. We'll figure out if that is the right amount afterwards. 50 of that. Again, four shots of espresso. This is roughly 80 grams of espresso. Okie dokie, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Most certainly reaching the, the upper limits of this vessel. So let's go in with our citric acid solution. Now I'm gonna go in with a very small amount and then I'm gonna stir and then we'll see if we need to add any more. That was about seven grams. I can see it curdling, but I think we need a little bit more uh, for this amount of milk. I know this looks like bad things, but this is very good for this process. So in total, we have about 10 grams of our highly concentrated uh, citric acid solution. And you can see nice, big, delicious curds <laughs> forming. This is what we want. This is good. I'm gonna set this off to the side to really fully separate and let everything kind of marinate together <laughs> for lack of a better word. Let's get our kind of clarifying station set up. Okay, now for straining out the curds, uh, you can go the cheesecloth route uh, like we were doing earlier. You can just kind of set up a sieve, a catch underneath and then like a cheesecloth and run everything through that. However, this is a coffee channel. Most of you are coffee people. You probably have some sort of pour over brewer uh, and coffee filters lying around. These work great. I like using a flat bottom. So my Kalita, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kalita. Uh, I have my Kalita and my filter. And then as soon as that is finished resting, we're going to pour it through this and let it filter out the bottom. And just because I know we have a lot of liquid uh, to get through uh, and I don't want this to take super long, I'm going to set up a second station to do uh, two batches at the same time. Now that our beverage looks very disgusting, I'm going to do my best to carefully transfer this into these. It's so the first pour that's always the worst. It's so much better afterwards. All right, well, that was just about as traumatizing as usual, but as you can see, what we have filtering out down here is a seemingly clear, transparent, amber, some might even say pumpkin colored liquid. This is such a, <laughs> such a gruesome process. How exciting. The fact that it is filtering so easily um, is a very nice sign. I don't really see any cloudiness happening in this beverage, so so far so good. Now, this is where it really takes a second because uh, the more liquid drains out, the more those curds get all kind of like clumped together and act as another filter layer. And so the longer the remaining liquid takes to filter down through it. So we can just set these off to the side. I'm gonna give them a couple of minutes. Uh, I might transfer them to kind of ease up the process a little bit, but we'll come back when we'll taste our dubious liquid very soon. All right, most of our filtering is done. And so we have a nice, pumpkin spice latte in here somewhere. Now, what I'm most nervous about and what this portion is gonna be about is adjusting that like acid to sugar, like flavor ratio. This is where we find out whether I did a, a very bad thing with the citric acid solution or potentially a very good thing. Well, I didn't do a bad thing. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. You still get a little bit of a bite. Like you can tell there was some sort of like acid added to this, but I did a pretty good job on that syrup. You can definitely taste pumpkin. It's kind of a weird scenario right now because the milk was heated, because a lot of the ingredients were warm. This whole beverage is still just like a weird lukewarm temperature, which isn't super enjoyable. So I wanna serve this over ice. I think it will taste a lot better then. I don't think I'm gonna add any more sweetness. Like there is, there's pumpkin, there is spice, there's a little bit of bite to it, but I think our final step will mellow that out. I'm very tickled right now. 
<laughs> I am uh, I'm very, very tickled. This is very unlikely that things would go this well on the first try. But regardless, that is our base because this is a pumpkin spice latte. I do think it is appropriate to have some level of whipped cream on top, so let's make that. Whipped cream is so simple to make at home. It is heavy cream, or I believe in parts of Europe, it's known as like double cream, question mark? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and traditionally you would add like maybe powdered sugar, like vanilla as your whipped cream. We have a very, very lovely pumpkin spice syrup ready to go. I think we should just add that as our sweetener and kind of double down on that pumpkin spice flavor. Pumpkin spice is becoming like a tongue twister to say. Lovely, so we'll go in with that. You know what? The more I'm thinking about this, our pumpkin spice syrup is still warm. If we add a warm ingredient to our whipped cream, it is not going to hold very well. So we're gonna go back to my original plan. I'll be right back. This is just how testing goes. Sometimes you want something, but sometimes you can't have it now and there needs to be a backup. So for our whipped cream, we'll just add a little bit of vanilla extract and then a tiny bit of powdered sugar for sweetness. Just a, just a skosh. And then we'll do this just by taste. I'm only making about a serving and a half of whipped cream, so you don't need a lot. Okay, you can of course beat this uh, with like a kitchen whisk. You can do this with like a, a standing mixer. You can use all sorts of things, but if you have a nice powerful milk frother, this thing is great, uh, you can make your whipped cream with a milk frother. I don't want like stiff peaks territory. I want something more akin to like cold foam. So we're gonna add air. Usually a good metric is like adding air until it about doubles uh, in size or, or volume or whatnot, and then tasting and deciding if you like that. So until then, you could just stand here with your milk frother and froth the cream. As it turns out, I need a new milk frother. I will be right back once more. This is not in any way, shape or form what my nano foamer was meant for, but we're gonna use it. All right, move about double in size. Let's taste. I think that should be pretty good. All right, now for some assembly. I'm gonna serve this cold, let me get an ice cube. Now I recently expanded my ice mold collection, so nowadays we also have very large ice cubes as well as regular ice cubes. Go in with a good amount of our pumpkin spice latte. I am so tickled at how pumpkin colored it is. Now I'm gonna do this with a spoon. We're gonna layer atop our whipped cream. Now I will say my one concern here is the fact that there is there is a good amount of citric acid existing in this beverage right now. Uh, and I'm concerned that my whipped cream may curdle when we add this back in. We'll see. I'm not seeing any curdling, fingers crossed. Let's do a final dash of cinnamon. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm hesitant to say we're done, but We've definitely created something. Now the whipped cream really pushed into that top layer uh, of the drink. So there is not as much whipped cream as I think it appears right now. I'm gonna stir these two together and we'll, we'll kind of see what we have at end. But all of those have been along for this. Here is our transparent, way too complicated pumpkin spice latte. I, I almost don't wanna like, I don't wanna ruin it <laughs> or stir it together, but there is absolutely no way to sip the drink below without sipping through this insane amount of heavy whip. Oh, this is lovely. I think we are, I think we're safe from curdling. All right, we've given this a good stir. Let's taste our creation. You know how I said at the beginning, this was either gonna be very, very good or horrendous. I think it's not horrendous. I think it might actually be. Maybe not very, very good, but it is good. For the sake of comparison, let's mock up a little version of this without the heavy cream and just taste it on its own. Before you ask, uh, the amount of like glassware I have is basically endless. I have, I have something for every shape and size. So a little mini version, ice cube, nice and chilled. It does have a, a very beautiful appearance to it. The mouthfeel of clarified drinks is just so, so unbelievably nice. Like, I, I think it might be a bit of an acquired taste because it's a, it's a strange, like, like you don't expect the mouthfeel from what you're looking at. It's very heavy, it's very silky, it's very velvety. It is, it is the weight of dairy without any of the flavor of dairy, but a, a pretty decent beverage, all things considered. You get a, a bit of kind of the kick, a little bit of the bitterness of the coffee underneath. You do get the sweetness. There is definitely pumpkin flavor and also, strangely enough, pumpkin aroma in all of this. Uh, you get a bit of the spice, I think in the future will go heavier 
on the spices, like all things considered. There is less cinnamon considering how much cinnamon I added. You don't really taste the milk. You do get kind of a, a bite of like kind of citric acidity, although it's not super heavy. It's kind of pleasant in this chilled form. I mean, it definitely doesn't taste like any pumpkin latte I've ever had before, but it does taste like a nice pumpkin spice drink. And then of course, this buddy over here. This is delicious and there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. It turns out when you add dairy and then take dairy away and then add even more dairy back into it, that is a pretty good combination. Well, this was fun. I don't know how any of you could possibly recreate this, but if you do go on this journey like I have just done, please let me know how it goes and please let me know what adjustments you make because I think this, this recipe will be something I go back to and, and tweak in a couple of ways. This was a fun carry on of the tradition of just absolute chaos every time pumpkin spice season arrives. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you potentially learned something or maybe something that you shouldn't do. And I'll see you all next time. I'm Morgan. You can find me here on YouTube once a week plus YouTube shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. That's my outro. I'm gonna take both of these. I'm gonna complete as much as I can of them. I'll see you next time. Have a good day, everyone.